left for you, for you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne, and unto you we lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb. Up on. Lift your voice and sing glory. 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 Glory to the Lamb. Somebody worship Him tonight. Glory. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on tonight, minister the word of the Lord to your people. Strengthen them even further. Encourage them on tonight. Let the words of the Lord Jesus Christ come alive to your people on tonight. As we begin this teaching, how far are you willing to go? Make it so plain, make it so simple that even a child would be able to comprehend and understand what the Spirit of God is saying to the church here tonight. Have your way. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. How far are you willing to go? How far? How far are you willing to go? Because the anointing will cost you everything. The anointing will cost you everything. How far? How far are you willing to go? Because when you say yes, when you say yes to God, Everybody is not going to understand. Are you hearing me? Everyone's not going to understand. Amen? So let's go into the Word of God now without any further hesitation here. I want to take you into the Word. So what's happening in this passage of Scripture that we're about to read to you? Elijah had just taken on the prophets of Baal. He just prayed and called fire down from heaven. And he prophesied to, to uh, Ahab that God was about to send rain. It was a famine for three and a half years. And we know, I mean, God sent an amazing amount of rain. But Jezebel, that wicked, that witch of a woman, she threatened the prophet Elijah and said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take your head from, I'm, I'm going to do you in. And so Elijah, <laughs> Elijah got discouraged. Now, you know, isn't that amazing? Right after a major victory, I want y'all listen to me good. Right after a major victory, and a major breakthrough, there's always a heavy attack to get a man or woman of God or that child of God who received that breakthrough. The enemy always try to plunge them into discouragement. And, and me and Pastor Amy, we, we've learned whenever God gives you a major breakthrough, you have to be on your God more than any other time. Are you listening to me? Because right after a major breakthrough, before and after a major breakthrough, there always seems to come a spirit of discouragement. And so Elijah, after he ran from Jezebel, Elijah is going through a difficult time and a discouraging time because Elijah is whining to God. <laughs> he feels like he's the only one left. <laughs> and God, God have to, 
watch this now because you're about to see you're about to see the word of knowledge that gift and 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 manifestation in the life of Elijah I want you because you're about to see how detailed God is and so now God is God is appearing to Elijah and he's ministering to Elijah and also God is about to send Elijah help because the load of the ministry was just getting to be too much for Elijah and God was about to send him new help. So now I want, I want to pick this story up in 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, watch this now, because God's about to give him detailed information about people's lives. Anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. Only the Holy Ghost can know who's going to be the next king. Just like how God sent Samuel the prophet to David's house to anoint David to be the next king. God is sending Elijah the prophet to anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. Watch this now, verse 16. And Jehu the son of Nimshi. Watch this. God is telling Elijah who this man is and telling Elijah the name of the man's dad. Watch this. Look at, look at the scriptures. Look at it. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi. Do you see that? He's telling Elijah who to, in, this, in this other area, go and anoint this other fellow to be king. And God is telling Elijah who, who, who the name of the man's dad is. Do you see how specific, do you see how detailed God is? And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. Now watch this. And Elisha, watch the details. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat. Do you see that? Of abel Mahola shall thou anoint to be prophet in that room. He gives Elijah, Elisha's name, gives Elijah the name of Elisha's dad and tells Elijah the city and the area he can go to find the, 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 this young new prophet that he's about to raise up called Elisha. Do you see how detailed God is? I dare someone lift your hands to heaven and say, God is just doing it again. He's just doing it again. Do, do, you, do, do you see how much information that God can give to a man of God? I mean, he is telling Elijah the next two kings for Syria and also for Israel. My God. Now watch this. I want you to see something here. Verse 17. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. And him that escape it from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. So Elisha was a worry. He's not some little weakling. Let's go into verse 18. Look at this word of knowledge here, y'all. Look at this. Listen to what he says to Elijah. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which had not kissed him. God told Elijah, you talking about you are the only one. You are dead wrong, homeboy. You are dead wrong. I've got 7,000. I've got a hidden remnant whose knees has never bowed to that old Baal, that old false god, and whose lips have never kissed his idol. Do you see the detailed information that God can give when he is ready, when God is ready to reveal something? There is no way Elijah can know how much people who are who, who have never bowed to Baal there's no way he could know that are you listening to me here tonight but yet the Holy Spirit and because Elijah is complaining saying everyone's neglected God I'm the only one left God say you you are dead wrong there's 7,000 who hadn't bowed to Baal yet you ain't the only one. Can, can someone lift your hands to heaven and say, I ain't the only one. I ain't the only one. God's got 7,000 reserved who has never bowed to Baal. You ain't the only true Christian. Don't, don't, don't even fool yourself. You ain't the only one hearing from God. Do you see that? Now watch, thanks. I want to take you a little further into this because I want you to see what happens. I want you to see what happens to Elijah when, when, when him and Elijah have this encounter. So let's go to verse 19. So Elijah, he departed thence and found Elijah. 
<laughs> you can't hide from God, but I tell you, God told Elijah exactly where Elisha was. Are y'all following this story tonight? Do you see how detailed our God is? God told Elijah the prophet Elisha's name and told him exact, gave him his address, how to find him. So he departed there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12. And Elijah, watch this, y'all. And Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on top of Elisha. Elijah threw his mantle on him, signifying the Lord has chosen you. You are next. My God, my God. Listen to me good. When Elijah put his mantle, when he cast that mantle on Elisha, Elisha understood. He knew exactly what that meant. That meant God have chosen you, Elisha. He have chosen you. He have handpicked you to work along with Elijah the prophet. Elisha, Elijah is going to train you. He is going to mentor you, and you will walk in the same exact anointing that Elijah is walking in. Somebody lift your hands to heaven. I feel, I tell you, I feel the presence of God right here. My God, my God. God is telling Elijah, tell Elisha. He will receive a deposit. He will receive an impartation of the anointing of God that's on your life. And when you leave the scene, Elijah, Elisha is going to have the exact ministry that you once had. I'm going to keep the testimony of the power of God in every generation. Are you listening to me tonight? My God, glory to God. Now watch this. I want to go to verse 20. I want you to see this now. Watch this now. Keep in mind, Elisha, he is working, helping his dad run his business. So Elisha knows how to work. He knows how to labor. He knows how to drive oxen. He knows how to plow in the field. And after, when the mantle hits Elisha, I tell you when the anointing hits you, something happens to you. There ain't no way you can be the same. And he left, watch this, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee. He knew what it meant. He's telling Elijah, let me, I pray thee, let me kiss my father and my mother and then I'll follow you. And Elijah said, you can tell Elijah have a rough personality. And he said unto him, go back again. What have I done to thee? <laughs> it wasn't what you did, Elijah. It was what the Holy Ghost did. When you, my God, my God, when that mantle, when that mantle, when that mantle touched Elisha, the anointing of the Holy Spirit flowed down through his body from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet. And Elijah said, Said, this jo Elisha said, this job don't mean a thing next to the anointing. And Elijah, watch this. Elisha, pay attention to me. Elisha had a choice to make when Elijah put that mantle on him that literally meant, meant he was set apart. He was set apart. He was called. He was chosen. To forsake all and to yield and say yes to the call of God. God doesn't, he doesn't do this to everybody, but there are some people, ah, uh, when that anointing hits your life, you can tell when the Holy Ghost is saying, I want you, I want you all in, all in, all in, all in. And the Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. How far are you willing to go? How far? How far? How far are you willing to go? Because the anointing of God will cause you everything. You will be misunderstood. You will be despised. 
you will be rejected because of the anointing of God on your life. You will be forced into a place where you will have to trust God. Are you hearing me on tonight? God will allow you to be in situations where there ain't nobody there for you except God. Me and Pastor Amy know about that. I said we know about it. I said we know about, about leaving it all. Leaving it all. Sometimes the little money we had, what did we do? We were doing ministry with it. We paid a price. Watch what Elisha did. I want you to see this. Watch this. Watch what Elisha did. And he returned back from Elijah and took a yoke of oxen on 12 of them. Elijah said, I'm going to have me a barbecue. And he slew them. These are his tools. He slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and the people ate them up. Boy, they were excited that day. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. He arose and went after Elijah and ministered to him. He became he became Elijah, he became Elijah's armor bearer. Wherever Elijah was, Elisha was there. He needed his water, towel, whatever he needed. When Elisha needed to wash his hands, when Elijah needed to wash his hands, Elisha would be there pouring the soap in the water. And, and Elisha was willing to humble himself. And you know why Elisha was willing to humble himself? Elisha was saying, I'm willing to pay any price. I'm willing. Are you willing to go all the way tonight? Are you how how far the Holy Ghost is asking you a question tonight? Because you got to be trained. I said, how far are you willing to go? Are you willing to be trained? Are you willing to say yes to God? Are you willing to say not my will? Are you willing to say yes to God tonight? You got to say, Lord. I'm willing to go where you want me to go. I'm willing to be what you want me to be and who you want me to be. I'm willing to do what you want me to do. I'm willing to say, Elisha, he burned up his tools, man. He walked away from everything, Phyllis, to follow Elijah and to work with Elijah. And to be a part of that ministry. And I want you to see this. Elijah, Elisha did not go and tell Elijah how to do things. Elisha had to have been seeking God. But he understood what it meant to wait. He didn't try to twist Elijah's arm and tell him how to do stuff. He just waited. And God spoke to Elijah and said, it's time. I want you to go and lay the mantle on Elisha. I'm about to raise him up. I'm about to call him into the ministry. And for some of you tonight, some of you could feel that call. Some of you could feel that call. You don't have to try to twist my arm, just wait on the Lord. God knows your name. He knows your address. He knows exactly where you are. God knows you want to be used. And if you trust God, God will blow your mind when he begins to bring things together. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpender.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpender.net ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it downloaded on your smartphones. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpender.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pender Ministries. You can also text to give. 
All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. And listen to all of our wonderful partners that make this broadcast possible. Me and Pastor Amy say, thank you. You are doing an amazing job helping us preach the gospel around the world. Continue to support this work of God. We love you and we appreciate you, Delhi. We will never take you for granted. God bless you. See you on tomorrow on another morning prayer broadcast. God bless. Bye-bye. Get ready to experience the extraordinary in Plano. The Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah is headed in your direction. You are getting ready to get a miracle. Shout yes! Pastor Sean and Amy Pinder are hosting three nights of miracles in Plano, Texas. You foul devil of sickness, come out, come out, come out. This young lady had fibromyalgia, Pastor well, what, Sean. But what happened tonight? I got healed. Now I there's no more pain. No. Don't run across that platform for me, sis. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. The dates, August 13th through 15th. Doors will open at 6 p.m. nightly. The event will start at 7 p.m. nightly. Venue, the Plano Event Center, 2000 East Spring Creek Parkway, Plano, Texas, 75074. Join hundreds in this life-changing encounter to experience the extraordinary and witness God's power. Click on the link below and register free today.